Together with the state of Pará, Rondonia, located in the northern part of the country, is the bloodiest wound in all Amazonia. The savage deforestation of recent years is endangering that ecological equilibrium about which politicians talk so much and do so little. Five million cows have been brought onto native land, and with them the guile of the landowners, who obstruct the work of human rights defenders with impunity on a daily basis. Many indigenous areas, which were created in Rondonia, are not really native. Many Bolivians and people from other countries were put here solely to preserve the jungle. You can see it for yourself. If the reserve has already been created, we're not going to question it. Now, what I can assure you of is that I don't know of any region in the state of Rondonia, no place where there is a native reserve, where ranchers are destroying bridges and roads to prevent the National Indian Foundation from reaching it. The government of Rondonia tells us that they know nothing of the boycott of the great ranches. But the state's federal police frequently receive complaints from members of the National Indian Foundation, threats, demolished bridges, and the dramatic everyday existence of those who defend the law. We've already had two sudden deaths, which to this day have not been explained, and which coincided with visits and access by people not authorized to be there including Atenor Duarte himself, when he went with other people. And well, when these deaths took place, it was very difficult for us to get the Indians out because the road was impassable. What's more, we couldn't get out by car because the gates of the reserve were blocked, gates which, incidentally, are in an area delineated by law. And this is what forced the nurse and one of our assistants to carry the dying Indians on a stretcher for 13 kilometers in the middle of the night. One name has come up in the conversation with the police captain in this meeting, recorded in the city of Villena, Antenor Duarte, owner of 35 ranches, who has been tried several times for Indian massacres both on and off his property, and whose privileged connections have helped him to dodge prison. In this recent report, we read what many other times before has been the precursor to murder, words addressed to a National Indian Foundation worker in a menacing tone. You will see what will happen. Antenor, Antenor Duarte. Duarte. What does that name mean to you? Very bad. Too much. He is one of the most evil landowners in the state of Rondonia. He kills, and nobody says anything. This is a serious problem. But people don't dare speak out. There have already been people who have had to go, who were forced to leave here, because if you talk, you can't live in this place. His gunmen won't give you a moment's rest until you go. The whites, the powerful, the politicians, the ranch owners, they prefer to see these poor human beings, human beings like you and me, they prefer to see them dead so they can put livestock in their place. And that's the honest truth, the honest truth. And all of this is in the name of progress. But for us, it's a giant step backwards for mankind. Meanwhile, in their world, in the heart of a peaceful bubble of serenity and quality of life, the Akunsu rest inside their tois. These two large houses made from acai and inaja palms 
lie close to their papaya fields, surrounded by their mythical universe. In one of the houses live Uruku and her son Pupake. They talk and swing in their hammocks, preparing to rest now, sheltered from the blazing sun. But it's the light of justice that they urgently need. The other hut, located opposite, is the house of Kunibu, his two wives, Tierui and Pugapia, and his daughter, Inotei. Here they also observe the siesta, that universal restorative ritual which some believe to have been patented by Spain. These people's love of birds is driving them crazy. Their toucan is happy, and for him, a siesta is a human thing. Hushing him is a matter of skill. The youngest member of the family closes his beak so as not to break the sweet spell of the house. The fluty sound of the matete transports us. Under this roof, one breathes in culture, humanity, and above all, peace. How is it possible for the government responsible for a civilized country like Brazil to permit these people to be killed with impunity? And how is it possible that in the 21st century, the rest of the international community looks the other way? In Porto Velho, Rondonia's capital, we visit the remains of an unfinished conflict. Locomotives, rusty and ruined railroad cars from a railway that was designed to conquer new horizons and deflower the jungle. The powerful nature of the Amazon did not really collaborate, however, and violently defended itself. The Madeira Mamore railroad line is a clear example of the blood-soaked historic attempt to conquer southern Amazonia. In Rondonia, two countries, Bolivia and Brazil, reached an agreement. One, Bolivia, sought a land route to the Atlantic, and Brazil sought the mineral wealth of its neighboring country, of Bolivia. Between the two, they came up with the idea for a train which would run the length of the Madeira River, kilometers and kilometers of jungle. Thousands of people died, defeated by malaria. Nature took its revenge on man on this occasion. However, and despite the fact that the driving force bore this name, Marshal Rondon, terrible things are still going on in Rondonia, now in the 21st century. 
And if you'll allow me the expression, they're still getting away with murder in the struggle for land. And I'm sure that Marshal Rondon, a pioneer in the defense of the natives, this current history of modern Brazil, contemporary Brazil, I'm sure he wouldn't like it.